God, thy mercy, O Lord, held me when I said I cannot. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Nalong Rechuku, and you are watching The Strange Acts of God. This is the NSPBD Testimony Show, where I get the chance, the honor, the privilege to sit down with the experts, to pick their brain and get their experts' opinions on the wonders of God that we got a chance to see and hear in the course of the week on NSPBD. And for that person tuning in for the very first time, I'm wondering, what exactly is NSPBD? NSPBD is the New Seasons Prophetic Prayers and Declarations brought to you by Streams of Joy International, the home of what God cannot do does not exist. Catch up with us weekdays, 7 a.m. Nigerian time across all of our social media handles as we continue to revolutionize our world through the power of prayer. Today, today, today on The Strange Acts of God, we have six testimonies up for review. As usual, I'm not here by myself. I'm joined by a dear friend of the show. I call him our favorite <laughs> family consultant physician. No, consultant <laughs> Consultant family <laughs> physician, Dr. Kelechi Onyeri is back with us on the Strange Acts of God. Good morning, Good morning, sir, good morning. Thank back. you so much. <laughs> welcome back to <laughs> Thank the show. You very so good much. to have you back. Thank you. It's a Our pleasure. consultant family <laughs> physician. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm privileged. <laughs> it's a Thank privilege. You, Thank, you, Thank you, What an amazing week it's mm. been on NSPPD. Wow. And the word of the Lord came to came pass. Came to pass. You know, I've been, I've been excited excited this week you know the thing is that like i i, I realized that nothing was spared uh -huh. gates uh -huh. thrones yes. foundations everything was just receiving an avalanche of the word Glory it was like as if a sledgehammer was just being thrown to anything that is a hindrance to uh -huh. people of god for the word of god to become manifest yes. so nothing was spared nothing was nothing spared, was spared. Nothing foundations was were spared. destroyed gates were lifted up Hallelujah. thrones everything was just it was just like a scatter scatter everything Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah. i cannot wait to see and hear the testimonies that would follow yeah, as a definitely, result of this week. Definitely. definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. So we have a ton of testimonies. We heard quite a ton of them this week. Mm -hmm. Let's quickly take a recap and listen to some of those testimonies we got a chance to hear this okay. week. This week on NSPPD, miraculous wow. approval wow. after initial rejection, mm. four years of secondary infertility wow. broken. broken. Creative miracle, right kidney mm. resurfaces. Glory to God, miraculous career breakthrough. Brother in coma restored to life, pancreatic cancer wow. gone. Wow. Immigration <laughs> settlement, nine years barrenness. of barrenness broken. Breast, Breast cancer, cancer. Reverse. glory to God. Miraculous career breakthrough. Mm. Miraculous marital settlement to a woman in her 40s. Mm, the 40s. Twin babies, enlarged mm, prostate reverse this week. Another miracle baby after seven yes. years. Wow. Ovarian cancer reverse, grade three. Spondylo Listasis. Reverse. <laughs> Glory to God. Family restoration. Awesome Breast testimony. Cancer. Breast cancer wow. reversed. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. Hallelujah. Wonderful week. That wonderful week. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it, it, the beauty of this is not like as if there's a pile of testimonies from years behind no. that we are replaying. No. These are testimonies that are happening now. Every week. Every week. My God. Every week. My testimonies God. that, okay, from the word of yesterday, uh -huh. this is the testimony of hey. today. From the word of two days ago, this is what. So it's not like testimonies that have been passed. 
piled up, up and they were, were recycled. Oh, there's been recycled. Right, no, right, right, right. these are fresh evergreen testimonies. Ah, glory to God. Ah, no, no, it's, it's in just, other words, as God is saying, He's, he's doing, doing. He's a talk and he's do a talk God. and do God. And we are carrying the evidence and the manifestation Manifest immediately, immediately as well. This immediately. Is, I mean, we can't take this for granted at, at all. all. God is doing wonders right here. On yes, He is. Glory to God. He so, is. like I said, six testimonies mm -hmm. up for review. Wow. wow. Last week was loaded. Last wow. week was loaded. Wow. And our first two testimonies today, we have a testimony from Mr. Bernard testifying from Ibadan, Oyo State, Nigeria. He testifies of a severe autoimmune mm. Mm. hemolytic anemia wow. reverse. Wow. We have another testimony from our sister, Sister Mary, testifying from Sydney, Australia, vitiligo, another autoimmune condition wow. reverse. Wow. Mm. Where are you tuning in from? Let us know in the comment section. Click on the share button if you're yet to. We'll be right back. Mm. God cannot do, does not exist. Um, I was sick in 2020 and um, it was so bad that um, I was admitted in the first hospital and referred to UCH. I'm giving this testimony from Ibadan. If I, I came from the UK, I thought I would be in Abuja to give this testimony, but I couldn't. After being diagnosed with autoimmune hemolytic anemia, if I had three different crises, it was so bad that, um, you know, when you see doctors, specialists, consultants, professors being confused on your case, you know that it's a serious case. That was what happened in my case. In fact, the second day after I did the eight test, I was admitted on the spot because um, according to the consultant, my result was the, it was the result of a dead man. They didn't know how I managed to survive. But before then, um, my wife has introduced me to Streams of Joy when she was doing a PhD in Numa here. I have been on the altar since 2021. She's been attending uh, Streams of Joy before NSPBD even came into existence. That was one of the things that really, really encouraged me during that crisis period. It was a crisis period. I've never been that sick in my life. The first day I joined the altar was um, 2021. That first day, Pastor Jerry described my case. He didn't mention autoimmune hemolytic anemia. I was sick in 2020 September, admitted in 2020 September, admitted in, referred to UCH in October, 2020, I was admitted. By 2021, they have referred me to, referred me abroad that they can't, they couldn't handle my case because while they know the problem, they couldn't find the source of the problem. It was a difficult situation. But eventually, we left abroad. When the consultant in the university teaching hospital saw the drugs I was using, which According to them in the UK, I ought to have used it for only three months, but at that time I have used it for two years and six months. The man was still wondering why I was still alive, because those drugs itself is capable of killing me. And the amazing thing is that every time Pastor Jerry speaks of autoimmune condition, I just key into it until 16th of January, for the first time since I've been on this altar, Pastor Jerry mentioned auto immune hemolytic anemia. I hear it, uh, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. I call, but, uh, if you are the one, put it on the last ship. The devil is alive. The devil is alive. He call, but, uh, by the power the rest Jesus from the dead. I announce, let it be reversed. And I just knew that it was done. They performed all kinds of tests on me. One week after another, they extended to two weeks, to one month, to three months. And then the Lord healed me. I am glad to say that all the while we've been in the UK, they didn't give me one drug. I am fine. And then I'm giving this testimony for from Ibadan. I want to say, Pastor Jerry, thank you very much for all the hard work you're doing. People will say the oil on your head will not run dry, but me, I will not say that. I will say, in this age and time, the oil on your head will not be contaminated. The Lord bless you and your team, Pastor Guru, Pastor O'K, Pastor Eno, God bless you all. I am fine, I am doing well. 
God bless you. What God cannot do does not exist. My name is Mary and I'm recording this video live from Sydney in Australia. I want to give my testimony about my vitiligo. And so in 2023, my sister decided to send me a link every day. My two elder sisters in the US, every day they kept sending me the link. At the point I got angry and told them not to blow my phone because I just got tired of them sending me the link. So in January, I decided that, okay, let me just go back and if it is just for prayers there's nothing wrong in me joining the nsppd prayers in the morning and so i started the morning prayers and i've been suffering from uh vitiligo where you find out that it's like a depigmentation of your skin it is an autoimmune disease that it cannot be cured and it will just keep spreading and so it started spreading when i joined in february and i told god i said god if only we can allow pastor to just mention this vitiligo i know it will go off and lo and behold in february pastor just mentioned vitiligo I don't know who this is, but the Lord is reversing vitiligo. The Lord is reversing vitiligo. The Lord is reversing vitiligo. I was I screamed and I came upstairs and said, Oh, it is me, it is me. I wrote it in um, the chat and said it is me and that was the beginning of my vitiligo covering. Something that mm, they've told me there is no way because there is no cure for vitiligo. And so I started seeing all my skin returning, gaining back its natural color, my eyes everywhere. And I was so excited. A doctor friend of mine had to come and she asked me, Mary, what did you do to your skin? Are you sure? And I said, hmm, what God cannot do does not exist. She was like, what is that? I said, you've not heard what God cannot do does not exist. That is my case because They've told me there is no cure, and thank God you are a doctor, and you also know there is no cure for vitiligo. But look, this is what God has done for me. Before I cover my eyes with makeup, I spend so much on makeup so that I will always cover it. But look at me now. Today, I am my eyes, my face cleared from vitiligo, and my hands, everyone in my body. And I just want to say, Thank you, Pastor Jerry. Thank you for that strength. And waking up every morning to come on the altar, to prophesy on people. It is not easy. And I just pray that God will continue to strengthen you. Wow. wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow, great. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Glory this to is God. Awesome. So, yes, so, you know, I love testimonies such as this. Yeah. I mean, the difference is yes. clear. Pictures don't lie. The before <laughs> and the after. 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 So there's no argument. No there's argument. There's no argument. Yeah. You know, she said there is no treatment for yes. this. It is irreversible. Irreversible. Once you have it, it just continues to spread. Yes. Is this correct? Yes. But before I, there's, there's this thing you taught me one time about <laughs> something in law, about, you know, something about something, you know, what do you talk about in law? Irreversible. The facts speak for themselves. Yes. Okay. Yes. Reps ipsa lupita. Reps <laughs> so the this facts speak speaks for, for it. Exactly. So this is an example. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, indeed. The facts speak speaks for, for themselves. Yes. So, you wow. know, so it's obvious, you know, it's quite clear that she had um, this um, hypopigmentation. Okay. This uh, hypopigmentation, if you look at the after you will see that uh, the skin tone oh. has even become uniform right you know and then there's this very hypopigmented patch right. around her eyes yes. and these are the kind of things and even the sights that you see wow. in vitiligo like she already mentioned it's an autoimmune um, condition. Autoimmune, you know, it's like um, this is the body fighting itself. Okay. And the body is fighting what? It's not fighting the melanocytes. Okay. The melanocytes are the cells okay. that now differentiate to form melanin. So melanin is what gives us the dark mm. pigmentation. So melanin is in every person. Okay. So if in every ethnicity, but the quantity or the uh, the quantity of melanin differs between the black and the Caucasians. Okay. So what happens in this, uh, what do you call it, in vitiligo, is that the body is now fighting against those melanocytes that produce melanin that causes the dark pigmentation. Okay. Now it could occur in the whole of the body generally. Hmm. 
or it could just happen at some sites. Okay. So like this, I don't know if there are other sites that... Yes, she did mention that yes. she has on her hands and okay. some parts of her body. Very fine. Okay. Because you could have some people have just generalized vertiligo, okay. while some people just have patchy vertiligo, or some people could just have them on the mucous membrane, or could just have them at just on the face. Yes. So just different sites. I noticed, mm. however, that there are some parts of the body that are more prone to vitiligo, like yeah. on the face, you normally yes. see around the mouth, around yes. the eyes. Is there a reason for this? You know, the thing is that they, um, it, 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 we, we will look at it that where the propensity of those antibodies would um, we fall into. Okay. Now, you find that, especially on the or orifices, okay. anywhere there's an orifice, anywhere there's an opening, especially around the mouth, around the nose, around the eyes, even sometimes around the penis, around the vagina. Mm. So you find that those sites are prone to, and it depends, just like I said, it depends on the type of the vital, vitiligo. Okay, mm. so I'm concerned as to why she developed this much later in life. Mm -hmm. Who is at risk of developing vitiligo? Who is at risk? Okay, you need to understand that vitiligo can be, uh, is an autoimmune condition. Uh -huh. So it could be as a result of an autoimmune condition that could predispose to the development of vitiligo. Yes. It could also be genetic conditions and it could also be environmental. Okay. So all these factors will determine, we have a role play to determine the what time the manifestation of the vitiligo will be. Mm. In periods that have like thyroid diseases, they could also have vitiligo. Okay. Some uh, diabetes, uh, hepatitis, hepatitis, especially hepatitis C, they could also have vitiligo because they are also autoimmune conditions. So you find out that there's a interplay between the environmental factors, genetic factors, and also the autoimmune conditions. So those will de that will determine at what point in time the person will be able to manifest some of these diseases. Wow. So aside from the discoloration, mm. are there other side effects? And is there an end? Is this something that will progress to maybe skin cancer or this is the end of it? Rarely. Okay. Rarely will it go to get into the point of skin cancer. Okay. But the thing is that it's, um, the body keeps on, the melanocyte keeps on um, uh, dividing so as to produce the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, melanin. Right. But in this particular situation, we have like what happens is that these melanocytes have been destroyed. So you just have this white discoloration. Oh, wow. So this is the major, major, um, what do you call it, presentation of vitiligo. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. But do you have, is there some form of treatment to slow down its progression? Beautiful. While it's still spreading? Beautiful. So what the treatment, the, the, what the treatment is after is just to slow down, just like you said, not to treat. Okay. It's just to manage. Right. It's just to prevent the, 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 spread. the spread in the immune response. Like I said, it's an immune response. Uh -huh. So to respond the immune response from continuing and progressing into that continuous destruction. So okay. we're just trying to slow it down. We're not, it's not a question of like trying to... So once the patches have become white, that's it? Nothing they don't, can be done? It, they, they, they don't go back. This is They like don't conclusive. go back, except for you now have to like try to... What people do. There was this very popular pop star uh -huh. who had uh, vitiligo. Right. So what did he do? He had to do a, part, a type of treatment called depigmentation. Mm -hmm. So depigmentation means that turn his whole skin to look like the vitiligo. Oh, wow. Is that what happened there? Yes. Okay. So there was a depigmentation of the whole skin. So he became white. Mm. So it was a, like a treatment for, part of the treatment for the wow, vitiligo. Wow, wow, wow. This is amazing. <laughs> so God stepped right in. This is clear. This is evident. <laughs> so you know, they say that medical doctors say there is no cure. There's no cure. And we are seeing this lady. I mean, look and at that look picture. And they look at the, yes. The white, the white patches, not just on her face now. She's yeah. like, even, on you know, those parts of her body. On the other parts of her body. Mm -hmm. They've all, you know, returned back to normal yeah. in five months <laughs> of joining the and altar, then altar of fire. fire. This yes. is amazing. Very now, much. on to our first testifier. Today, we're talking about autoimmune, autoimmune. Yes. conditions. Mm. We heard another autoimmune condition. I believe he said it was autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Now... Now, in this part <laughs> of the world, we are, 
Well, we have this assumption as Africans that, you know, such conditions, autoimmune conditions, are not for the black man. Mm. Therefore, you know, other European countries, you know, white people generally deal with this condition. Now, is this misinformation? Are we often misdiagnosed? Or does ethnicity play a role in a propensity, a propensity to develop some of these conditions? You know, the thing is that uh, we are growing. Okay. We're a growing society. Right. And the thing is that as we're growing, specializations are also growing. Okay. Before, we didn't have the, the gamut of um, specialists or specialists in different areas to recognize some of these diseases. Okay. And before, most of our diseases were just infections, tuberculosis and malaria, and malaria typhoid, and uh -huh. all that. But people are getting to understand that beyond some of these infectious diseases, there are also other disease, connective tissue diseases like hemolytic diseases like what we are seeing right now. Uh -huh. And now diagnosis is becoming increasingly, increasingly, um, uh, incre it's, it's getting more rampant. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that um, in primary care settings, who looks for autoimmune disease? Who looks for um, autoimmune hemolytic disease? Right. All you're looking for is just what the patient presents to you. So you find out that by the time diagnosis is made, the patient has already gotten to a late stage. Mm. But the thing is that one of what, what are the characteristics of autoimmune hemolytic anemia? Mm. The body is pre uh, developing an immune reaction against its own blood. Wow. Against its own blood. So wow. what you have is that the blood is not just being broken up. So when the blood is being hemolyzed, uh -huh. the blood is broken up. Blood that should be used for, <laughs> for, for a better advantage yes. is not being broken up. And right. then the body is not trying to be able to like organize the breakdown product of the blood. Okay, okay. So it now starts manifesting in different organs. Uh -huh. It manifests as jaundice, as yellowness of the eye. Okay. It manifests as severe anemia. That mm. the person, it manifests as heart failure. Mm. It manifests in the liver or in the spleen. Enlargement of the liver, enlargement of the spleen. So different systems which have to do like what you call the hematopoietic systems wow. are affected. Wow. I can see an image up. Now, yes. is that like a patient it's, that is... So, you know, because this is very clear, okay. where you have, um, what do you call it, um, um, a white-skinned person. Right. So, you're now having this... Um, the, 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 the breakdown products of the blood, the body is being shown on the distance as patches, which, is, which you're seeing on the surface of the wow. skin. Yeah, but in the black skin, you might not be able to you see. You might not be able to see. You might not be able to clearly. see. So, what you could just see is just jaundice, dark colored very dark colored urine uh -huh. then by the time you now do your blood samples and then you'll be able to see like severe anemia reticulocyte count or in some situations when you now try to do like maybe check for the specific antibodies you can be able to like see that the title of those antibodies are elevated wow yeah so for two and a half years he was on medication like he said mm -hmm. and you know at some point they had to refer him out of the country so why was this so difficult to put like why were they why did they have a hard time curbing this sickness is it lifelong is it life-threatening you know the thing is that like i said um genetic factors environmental factors uh -huh. and then also there are also other the secondary factors so it could be a primary cause and it's a secondary cause mm. so in this particular case the secondary cause of the either the hem or the hemolytic anemia was not found okay so if the secondary cause is not found all you mm. just have is that this person the antibody all you're trying to do is to suppress the immune response but not to treat what is causing the hemolytic anemia right so what i think in such in this situation was that probably the secondary cause uh, was not found okay but why he had to move out of the country it's it's it really beats me because right. i know really that there are uh, technology has actually improved okay technology has improved to making some of these diagnoses a lot better wow yeah. Wow. Yeah. After two and a half years on medications, he mm -hmm. said he was told he shouldn't have even been on that medication for longer than three months because it had, you know, harsh effects on his mm -hmm. body. But here he was dealing on, with these meds for two and a half years and wasn't getting better, not until a word came forth on the mm -hmm. altar of fire mm -hmm. for the very mm -hmm. first time. For the very first time. Four years, Papa mentioned autoimmune. Mm -hmm. 
hemolytic anemia. Wow. And the thing is that you need to understand is that even when he traveled abroad, they didn't do anything for him. No, they didn't. He was just being observed. Uh -huh. So the thing is that the word, the healing, the healing process was in the word. Glory. Not in the fact that he traveled abroad. Yes, the yes. healing process was not that they gave him something uh -huh. abroad. The word was what caused the healing. Yes. So the point is this. I still will say that the, the, whatever happened abroad, the word was the transition yes. between his Nigeria and, the, and abroad. Absolutely. So maybe the people in abroad were not like, the word has finished his work. Yes, the word of the Lord <laughs> came, to came to pass. <laughs> the word of the Lord came to yes. pass, has finished its work. So they are now like wondering, uh -huh. What have they been treating for? Mm. Oh, yeah, let's observe and see. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Since that day, since up that up till now, now autoimmune, he what? Hemolytic anemia, anemia <laughs> is nowhere to be found. <laughs> Vitiligo, that is known to be a lifelong condition has been reversed right here on mm. the altar of fire. Truly, what our God cannot do does, does not, not exist. exist. <laughs> Life-threatening and lifelong mm. autoimmune mm. disorders Diverse. reversed. To God alone be all the glory. We have two testimonies. We have a testimony from our sister, Sister Mercy, testifying from mm. Accra, Ghana. Breast cancer mm. reversed. Mm. She testifies for a family friend. We have another testimony from Mrs. Fatima, testifying on behalf of her husband right here in mm. Nigeria, adrenocortical carcinoma reverse. We will be right back. I'm here to testify on behalf of a family friend that God has shown great mercy. Uh, I joined the prayer link on November 8th, 2022. And it's just surprising that even as I was going back to the previous messages to um, to gather documents for this testimony, I just realized that the te the theme for that that day's prayer session was, "Oh God, help me! My case is an emergency." And it's just so surprising that that case that we were, the case that this family friend of ours was going through was that of an emergency, because this was a woman that had been diagnosed of cancer when she was pregnant. After all sessions of chemotherapy back and forth the disease going getting getting worse and it was a very difficult time for us and so we just kept believing god for a breakthrough so that's when i joined the link and you gave a specific prophecy that um, there's a certain woman and that she was diagnosed of cancer when she uh, when she was pregnant and they even wanted to remove her baby you are pregnant. It was a day while you were pregnant that they told you that you had cancer. It's been a difficult time. They are suggesting. I don't know why. I don't know why. They are asking you to get rid of the pregnancy. Help of the Lord, help of the Lord, help of the Lord. Look at this woman right now. Let every cancer cell disappear. Let every cancer cell disappear. And we are just here to confirm that that prophecy was true. And I even typed in in the chat chat section that we are the ones we are the we are the ones and god has proved himself faithful and he has come through for us and this is our evidence you can see pictures that are added to pictures of when the breast the breast was just so soft it was just in a very bad state and how god has healed her and how um this test results has also proved that there are no cancer cells in her body and we just thank god and we just want to say god bless you pastor jerry for availing yourself God bless you. What God cannot do does not exist. My name is Fatima. My husband got ill in November, was having severe stomach pain, and went to the hospital and went for scan. After the scan, it showed that he had a tumor on his left kidney. So the tumor was being managed till February. Then in February, he had a surgery, and the 
tumor was taken for various tests. After the tests, it showed that he had adrenal cortex carcinoma. One day, I cried to my friend, Adeni Kendi Yuki, and told her what had happened. And then she asked me if I knew NSPPD, and I said, no. Is it a cancer clinic or something? She said, no, this is where they cure cancer. God heal cancer like water. And I was like, the church. She said, yes. And then she started sending me links, and I started joining. And the friend of mine did it up, Elroy. My husband's case was mentioned. Adrenocortica carcinoma. Adrenocortica carcinoma. If you are the one put it on the live stream, the devil is a liar. I chewed into it and we kept praying. We prayed and I continued watching it. Watching it daily. The next week, my husband went for a pet scan in Lagos and then it showed that there was no cancer. And the doctor congratulated us and was really surprised because the cancer started spreading to other parts of his body. But now no chemotherapy is going to leave his life happily. Come, thank you, Pastor Jerry. May God bless you. May you on your head never run straight. Amen. This is huge. This is huge. This is huge. Hmm. Oh my goodness. This hmm. is huge. Wow. You know, um, you need to understand something about this adrenocortical um, um, malignancies. They are very rare, but they are very aggressive. Mm. They are very rare, but very aggressive. And the thing is, is I, I, this, I've, been, I've been listening to um, NSPPD for a very, very long while. Right. And I can't count, I don't know how many adrenocortical tumors okay. that has been mentioned mm. or that you have heard. You know, there's this professor that said something about NSPPD, and he was talking about Pastor Jerry, and he said mm. a lot of times like this, even he has a professor with so many years of medical um, expertise that he has to go back to his books. Mm. <laughs> he has to go back to his books to look up some of the cases that are mentioned in NSP on NSPPD. Mm. Because the point is that these cases are rare. They are rare. They are not cases that you see. They are not the typical cancers that you hear about every day. Mm. If you hear about a breast cancer, of course, you, right. you, you hear about a kidney, Post you hear about prostate, yeah. you hear about a, a dementia cancer, ovarian yeah. cancer. Yeah. You hear about them. Mm. But adrenocortical, mm. adrenocortical cancer. Uh, it's, Take it's, us it's, back. Where is this? This is cancer of the what? Adrenocortical. It's, it's the adrenal glands. Adrenal so the glands. adrenal glands. Right. So the adrenal glands just sit on top about the kidney. Okay, okay that's it. Yes. Yeah. It sits on top of the kidney. Okay. So what happens, so you see, when they felt that there was a problem, they thought that the problem was with the kidney until when they did, and they probably did histology, and they found that it was in the adrenal glands. Right. Now, the adrenal glands has diff two specific layers. Okay. There's a cortex, cortex and the medulla. So the cortex is the outer covering. Okay. So this tumor now is the tumor of the what? The adrenocortical. Wow. So at the level of the cortex. Wow. So the cortex itself also has three layers producing different things. So let me just, so that you understand how important the adrenal glands are. So the three layers of the of the of the of the adrenal of the adrenal cortex, right? right? The adrenal cortex and the adrenal medulla. So the three layers of the adrenal cortex, the first one produces what we call aldosterone. Okay. This aldosterone takes care of and makes sure our sodium potassium balance. And of course, you know, sodium potassium, sodium especially, is very important in blood pressure regulation. Okay. Then you now have under layer. After that, you have the, well, let me not bore you with too many medical names. Okay. Then after the first layer, the glomerulosa, that's what we call it. Then you have what we call the fasciculata. That part is where you have this cortisol, release of cortisol. Cortisol is a very important inflammation, immune modulation, metabolism of some of the foods that we have. Okay. Then you now have the last layer, which is that help the at the level of producing of some of these um, um, androgens sex okay. hormones the estrogens that may, that we have the okay. testosterone that we have so the, they are the androgens are in um, weak precursors before they now become activated into the active what what we use for our sex differentiation into male and female secondary sexual characteristics of that's very important. So you can see how important this small, that insignificant small thing. <laughs> thing. I never even knew. Do you understand? Of the body Didn't you not? Until now. Yes. Mm. Didn't you not have at that other part, the, medu the medullary part, 
which you, you when you are it's synthesizing, I'm sure you must have heard of um, uh, um, epinephrine. You know, so so what happens is that when people are um, um, with adrenaline, when people want at uh, maybe something oh, happening, adrenaline is stimulated. Right. Oh. Your heart rate starts beating. Yes, you want yes, to yes. run. You know that uh -huh. adrenaline secretion. Yes. You now have those probably you want to fly, you uh -huh. want to uh -huh. run. <laughs> so right. that's how important. Wow. That this, small but this mighty. Small but mighty. Small but mighty. That little portion. That little portion. My God, the body is so complex, you know. Do you understand? Wow. So uh, that's, this is what this little portion is all about. And a tumor somehow a tumor found, found its, its way on there, that little, on that tiny little portion. portion. So you now find that you're going to have problems with um, blood, pressure, blood pressure regulation. You're going to have problems with um, um, weight. The guy is going to be probably gaining weight. He has problem with um, because of the androgens that are affected, he could start having feminization. Maybe if there's a suppression of his androgens for testosterone production. So you now have some of these changes now coming or happening. But you wow. see, because of how rare it is, uh -huh. you will not, as a doctor, look out for it. Okay. And because you not look out for it, it keeps spreading. It keeps spreading, right. Before you know what's happening. Because if the tumor is caught early and surgery is done, surgery is definitive. Okay. Surgery is definitive. Okay. But we have a situation whereby this person had already had a tumor that was spreading. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And like I told you, it's rare, but what? Aggressive. Very aggressive. Very aggressive. Wow. So here <laughs> she is. The wife to this patient that yes. was recently diagnosed yes. in distress, she picks up her phone and she calls her friend. Yes. And the friend tells her immediately, you need to come on NSPPD immediately. Yes. Not minding the fact that it was a Muslim she yes. was talking to. Yes. And the lady says, what's NSPPD? Is yes. that a cancer clinic? Yes. And she says, no, it's not a cancer clinic. <laughs> Papa said, yes. It is a cancer it clinic. It is a cancer <laughs> clinic where we administer <laughs> fire therapy. Fire therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. But what I do love about this testimony is that this lady, with just childlike simplicity, it is. she just took the word of her friend. Okay, if this is where my healing is going to yes. come from, I'm just going to align. She came on the altar. She observed that people are waiting for the man of God to call the yes. case. And she says, wow, this Jesus that is doing this for them, come and heal my husband. Yes. And she waits for her matter to be called up. And you know what? That same month, Papa calls up adrenal cortical. cortical Carcinoma. carcinoma. The very next day, Dr. Kelechi. You know, um, the very next <laughs> day, he goes for a repeat test. And, the very next day. And everything, everything cleared out. You know, this testimony beats my imagination on so many levels. From her childlike faith and just the simplicity. You know, she just took, and you know, God is simple like that. Yeah. She just took. You know, the words, she just believed it very simply. Mm -hmm. You know, not minding the rarity or the spread yes. of the condition of, of, the her condition husband. of her husband. Not minding that this is not the God that she's serving. Yes. She has heard of his report. She, she has, has heard, heard of his deeds. Yes. And she's like, you know what, let me try your God and see. Exactly. And she came on and God, through his servant for surgery, calls up her case immediately. And the very next day, says, let's go and check. You, you know, Let's go and check. You know, and, you know the, the, be, the, beauty, the beauty of God NSPPD is, is, not, is that it's not a respecter. Mm. NSPPD is not a respecter. The fire altar is not a respecter. It's not a respecter of diseases. It's not a respecter of persons. It's not even a respecter of religion. Mm. You're not coming there as a religion with your religion. Mm. And people that have actually gotten, you see people of, from different religions. We've seen them from um, the, the India, yes, 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 you yes, know, yes. Um, yes, yes, the, yes. different, different ah. ethnicities with what they believe. So ah. don't even hear English. Hey. Don't even hear English. Right. All they just right. did was like, they just amen. kept amen. Our answer is here. They believe. They and, believe and it. And at, at the end of the day, faith is faith what you need. Faith is what you need. Right. Faith is what you uh -huh. need. So she connected with her faith. Close. Connected with her faith. And see, here hey, we are. Hey, God is good. You know, the Bible says that all that came to Jesus were healed. He were healed. All. All. That's multitude. Yes. You know what? 
Jesus would walk into cities mm -hmm. and multitudes yes. would be healed. Yes. Be tax collector. He healed his enemies. And he, you know, the soldier that cut off, um, um, Peter yeah, because, cut because off the soldier. He just carried his neck. He carried, he healed. How, that was someone that came just, to arrest just him. Just plugged it back. <laughs> right. So it's the same Jesus yesterday. The same. Same Jesus today. today and forever. Same Jesus in the life of Sister Fatima and her husband. Yeah. Same Jesus. And you know, Pastor, he said, he, he, and he said, greater works. Uh -huh. Greater works. Greater. I did good works. Uh -huh. I did things that people are marveling at. Hallelujah. But he said, greater There's works. Greater. We're, we're actually in oh the season of greater works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're in the season of greater works. Greater works. This is that season. This is the season and, of and, greater and for works. Me, this testimony also shows us God's sovereignty yeah. over healing. Over healing, yeah. And just his love for yeah. people. I don't think personally there's a greater way to show love to someone than to be able to lift up his you know take off his pain Bird and, and burdens and that is what we see jesus do yes. for unbelievers when yes. they come to him he takes off their pain you know regardless of the fact that they are not yes you know, yes believers. yes but for every time he heals this non-christians he always points them to Towards his son. son imagine this woman and her husband going forward what they would say of the God of the Christians. Yeah. Just yeah. imagine. What, what greater evangelism, evangelism is there outside yes. of this? Oh. They've experienced and seen firsthand that God is mm -hmm. and that those that put their trust and belief in him are able to get healings regardless of regardless what that of diagnosis might is. be. The Bible said that I may know him uh -huh. and, the, and power. the power that I may know him and the power. That's what she experienced. Glory to God. She came to a place where she's come to know him Glory. and the power. Hallelujah. Nobody can separate that from her for life. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. Huge testimony. Huge testimony. We had another testifier, mm. breast cancer. Breast cancer. I mean, I saw those breasts and I was... I mean, uh, no. I mean, I no, mean no, no, no. what stage no, no, would that no, no, no. be? You know, what the thing, stage this, is, this is already a forgetting. This is ah. a forgetting mass. You know, the thing is, is at this point in time, you expect that this cancer would have spread to involve the lungs, would have involved a lot of a Stage lot of a, a lot of tissues. So the thing is that my own is not just about the fact that the healing of the of the breast cancer, but the restoration. There's still a breast standing. I'm, There's a I'm, restoration. Pastor Nalong, the restoration, the restoration of this fungated mass. Ah. The restoration is what beats my imagination. Hey. Because how would you? We'd have needed a plastic surgery, a plastic surgeon. The bride the bread and cut off all the dead tissue right. and then probably look for tissues from somewhere else uh -huh. and then now implant into that breast to get it to what it is like this. Now, this is definitely a stage four cancer, yeah, isn't def it? Definitely, def definitely. Definitely. Even with chemotherapy, mm. is it typical to see breasts that have decayed to this extent? You know, is it typical you know, to see a reversal such as this? You know, even you, know you know, we've talked about breast cancers. Uh -huh. Time without number right. there's no point of this question is very rhetorical okay. this is the hand of god <laughs> there's no this way this is the hand of god glory to god this is the hand of god like i told you the whatever um, cells you're just going to be destroying the cells the cancer cells now this tissue this depth of destruction of this tissue mm -hmm. for you to be able to like restore this tissue to its what it is it's not in is it's, it's going to take quite a while and a lot of processes right i'm curious as to why the cancer spread so quickly she said she found out she had breast cancer while she was pregnant mm. and i know that um typically for pregnant women they're not in so much of a hurry to begin to administer all of those treatments mm. so could that be the reason why it spread so quickly because they didn't begin the process early enough you know it's um <laughs> it's, it's complex okay breast cancer and pregnancy is complex okay and it says that um the pregnancy um, elaborates hormones estrogen progesterone uh -huh. now these hormones are also some cancers okay. also have their receptors okay. those hormones as their receptors Okay. which they utilize to grow. Okay. Then also during pregnancy, you find out that the, because the baby, is, um, the baby is a foreign body. Uh -huh. A baby is a foreign body. Right. And then the body now suppresses its immune system okay. to prevent re rejection of that baby. Okay. So you find that during pregnancy, there's immune suppression. 
So the body is not able to what? Step up the immune process oh. with which to be able to like fight the cancer cells at that point in time. So it enhances the spread of cancers. Wow. Okay, during pregnancy too, there's a lot of uh, growth, growth angiogenesis, uh -huh. a lot of growths. Right. Growth, my cells are dividing, uh -huh. and of course, cancer is all about cells dividing. Right. So you find out that all the cancer has to do is to like make use of the apparatus uh -huh. of the growth of the baby, of the breakdown of, the, of cells. Because actually what helps to form the hands, to form the body, the eyes and everything, and then enhances growth at that point in time. Mm. So it actually enhances cancer growth. But just like I said, it's not completely understood, but these are the mechanisms mm. that have been postulated in this, course, in this causation. So a woman at <clears throat> this stage came on show me mercy my case is an emergency i need help i need help, help. my I case need help. is an emergency i need help and <clears throat> the god of the fire altar came through for her came through for her i mean look at those pictures the before and the after <laughs> she's alive first and she's foremost from first and she's alive breast cancer had <laughs> spread to other organs yeah, she's alive to tell the story to tell the story yes. she lived she survived and you know like i've been saying the month of may and june it has been cancer promos it's cancer on the promos. altar of fire yeah. it's like god is in a hurry to read the earth mm -hmm. of cancer yeah. Different stages, different types of cancers, but they all bow to the, the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. And you know, I believe that these are just a few that have testified. Uh -huh. I believe that there's a lot. Mm. Because when the word goes out like this, it hits a lot of people left, right, and center. Right. So you find that a lot of people also have their testimonies, but they've not come out. Right. So we look forward to, to the, hearing those the testimonies. testimonies from our testifiers. Yeah. My God, God has been working mm. wonders on the altar mm. of fire. And that's why we say what our God cannot, cannot do, do does not exist. Hey, adrenocortical <laughs> carcinoma. No, Stage 4 breast <laughs> cancer. Reversed yet again. We will never get tired of these awesome no, works no, of no, Elroy no, no, no. on all. the altar of fire. To him alone be all the glory. Wow. We have two final testimonies today and our testimonies are coming from our sister all the way from Cameroon, Sister Ebenki, and a sister from Canada. Her name is Sister Inkiru. They testify of miraculous career breakthroughs. We'll be right back. My name is Ebenki Felicitas and I joined NSPPD since 2022. On the prayer altar you were praying and after the prayers you said, when you're coming the next day on the prayer altar, come with what you do for a living. Come with a symbol of what you do for a living and what you want God to do for you for a living. Pastor Jerry, my heart, I was saying that, ah, ah, maybe I'm a cleaner in a host, in a, in a, in a, in a company. What will I carry to the fire altar? That day in the morning, I was in the office when the prayers were going on. And Pastor Jerry, you said, raise up everything you do for a living. Pastor Jerry, I raised up my rack and my broom. You said in one hour time, may the Lord surprise you. In 24 hours, may the Lord surprise you. Pastor Jane, I was there answering, Amen, Amen, Amen. I didn't know what I was answering to. I was just answering, Amen, Amen, Amen. One hour after the prayer, Pastor Jerry, they called me to the office and said, Madam, you have been promoted. Eh? Pastor Jerry, I didn't know. I asked, promoted to Pastor Jerry, they say quality controller and management. Ah, Pastor Jerry, I could not shout. Pastor Jerry, me, I'm a boss now. I'm a madam on my own. People answer to me now. I'm no longer a cleaner, Pastor Jerry. I just want to give God the glory. Pastor Jerry, I just want to tell God thank you and tell the whole world what God has done for me. Pastor Jerry, may the oil on your head never run dry. May the river on your head never run dry. Pastor Jerry, I'm coming back for more testimony. Yo. We they pray, we they show. We they pray, we they show. My name is Inky Rook and I'm testifying from Canada. During Pastor Jerry's birthday last year, August, I made seven birthday prophetic declarations. And number two was, 
in another five months, that vacancy that the Lord has created for you at the top, I announce enter into it. I don't know why God is asking me to declare it. As your two hands are lifted, the second transition prayer, the Lord has asked me to make right now. I speak as I hear. At the sound of your amen, hear me as I hear the Lord. In another five months, Kabbalah, the vacancy that the Lord has created for you at the top, Akalasha, that vacancy that the Lord has created for you at the top. If your amen will turn I announce, enter into it. Enter. And I think that this out to a CEO lady in her office. Fast forward to January this year. So I submitted my CV online, a Canadian website, federal government website. So when I submitted my CV, I got an email the next day scheduling me for interview. And then when I looked at it, the position they were going to interview me for, and I said, well, when, when did I get here? When did I get here? So I was like, oh, maybe they made a mistake because I only submitted my CV. I didn't apply for any particular position. They wouldn't give you room to apply. They would be the one to place it. And when they were telling me about interviewing for that position, I just said, oh, maybe they made a mistake. And I went for the interview. It was online. I went for the interview and they came back to say I was successful and the interview. And because the job was high up there, I said, oh, maybe this would be a mistake. And honestly, I didn't take that job. I didn't take it because I felt this one is too much it's just high up there. Maybe these guys, they made mistake. I never applied for this position. And I didn't take that job. That was in January. Fast forward to February this year. I, I, I still continue praying with this. And then February this year, I got a phone call from um, uh, um, a nurse that did her clinical, I mean, nurse that did her clinical in the hospital where I worked. And she said, uh, we have a um, vacancy that we're trying to fill. And I, I thought that you'd be the right fit for it. Our director will be leaving in a, in a month's time and we're looking for another director. I had already told our management that I knew someone that can do the job and I told them you can do the job. I said, did you say director? And she said, yes. I said, why, why would you say I can do the job? When you met me, I was at a floor nurse at the hospital. My name's management. I have zero experience in management. So how, how would I do the job? She said, oh, I know you can do it. We will just support you. I told them and they said, okay, they are going to support you. I said, what? I don't understand what you're saying. To come and be a manager in that facility. She said, yes. The next day, her manager called me and said, oh, someone, one of our staff told us about about you in the meeting and she said you you be a good fit for the director position that we're trying to fill and would you be able to send us your cv and we schedule for interview and all that this was on a friday in february i said okay give me till monday morning to come back to you this was friday evening she said okay and I left her and of course I came on my knees on the fire altar and I said, God, this is the second time. I know I've been praying for this. Like, I know I've been praying for this. But this one is on the a director position again. Like, I don't know, how am I going to do this job? Okay, Father, if this is coming from you, I need confirmation from Pastor Jerry. I need Pastor Jerry to mention this case. And this was on a Friday. I had Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday to reply then. God, I want to hear Pastor Jerry say, Nki Ruka. Arise, pursue, overtake, and recover all. I want him to mention it this way. If he doesn't say it this Sunday and Monday morning on the fire altar, I won't even respond to them. I won't. I won't take their call. I won't even say anything. So, 52 minutes into the prayer, but then I said, God, Pastor Jerry doesn't mention him. So, how are we going to do this? I don't know how we're going to do it, but I want to hear my name. I want to hear and kill Ruka, arise, pursue, overtake, and recover all. And I kept praying with this Saturday, Sunday morning, Pastor Jerry, 52 minutes into the prayer i heard pastor jerry say call your name say jerry you know how he would say call your name say jerry i called my name i said thank you Luca. and then the next thing i heard arise push you overtake and recover all oh, my goodness call your name and say jerry arise push you overtake recover all i opened my eyes i was like is he in my room what is what is going on i was happy that everyone sees me oh he hears and he answers prayer on this lot i was excited that god heard me and put it in pastor jerry's man but then right then immediately i began to analyze this situation and i said okay you're going to be a director in that place how are you going to be do this you're not into management you have zero experience in management how are you going to be a director then then fear started sitting in and i said god don't they have like assistant director so i can start from that one this one is too much and i'm like fear setting and right there where the prayer was going on i said i don't think i'll do this i don't think i'll be able to do this too much 50 30 minutes into the prayer just one minute after pastor jerry said that one he said i don't know whether you will understand this but in your season of visitation may you not reject your help 
It may come in a way you never expected it. May you not be the one rejecting your help. You will not reject your help. Oh my God! I don't know whether you will understand this. But in your season of visitation, may you not reject your help. May you not reject your help. He may come in a way you never expected. Oh, may you not be the one rejecting your help. You will not reject your help. You will not reject your help. So I mean, I knew this was me because I was arguing in my mind that I wasn't be, I wouldn't be able to do it. I said, I knew right away this was for me and then i made up my mind then and then that i was going to contact them on monday cut it short on monday i contacted them and did the interview passed the interview and i got the job and then that's how an msvp then is a director in this facility and my goodness god is true and that's how we've been doing this that's how we've been managing it and god is faithful we're doing an excellent job an msvp there director in this facility i want to say thank you to the world the god that sees me An NSPPDN is a director hey, in this facility. Hey, amazing. <laughs> wow. Yes, truly really amazing. Oh, my God. Truly really amazing. You know, this is the beauty of NSPPD. Yes. And, you know, we are people of Kairos. We yes. are not governed by worldly times. No, 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 no. At any point, your At any story point. could change. Exactly. Now, this is a woman that was a floor nurse. Floor said, nurse, yes. And she's testifying today as a director. Director. Now, I know you work in a hospital yes. setting. So, you need to break it down. <laughs> to us who is a floor nurse how many levels away <laughs> from a director okay. you know give us shed light okay on this. the floor nurses are those that do the normal daily um routine nursing activities okay nursing care take vital signs administer drugs help patients um to do their things basic activities of daily living and then from that level you start from the nursing officer Okay. Then I get to the principal nursing officer. Right. From the principal nursing officer, you get to the. <laughs> you already I need counted. to keep count, okay? <laughs> you now get to the assistant chief nursing officer. All right. Then the chief nursing officer, okay. assistant director. My From God. assistant director, then you now get to the director. Wow. So, and these levels are not like every year that you move. No. What? It takes up to three, four, five, sometimes six years. In one, to depending move from one level exactly to the other. depending on the facility and the environment on the environment to move from one level to the other, you have to take exams. Wow. Yes, you have to take exams, promotion exams, which are conducted as a. Um, it's not just conducted within the as the hospital setting. It is conducted that federal character and everything must be um, must be met. So you pass the exams. Then before you now moved to the level, to the next level. Hey! <laughs> hey! So, this is time compressed. Time compressed. This is, even if we would say it takes two years to get yes. to the level, minimum. Minimum. Moving six levels up is at, like at least 12 years yes. compressed you, in you, one day. You know when uh, Papa used to say on the altar of fire, I say, you have your 10 years in uh -huh. one year, in one in one year right. 10 years in one month it's like it sounds strange and this is this typifies it my goodness this just typifies it hey. all high years that she would have taken to get to that level and understand this she was not aspiring for that level mm -mm. she was not aspiring for that level as far as she was concerned, this level is too high. It's too you know, high. It she almost you know, stopped herself. You know, and then he said, I do not concern myself with things that are too high for me. They are me. too high, exactly. Leave me at my level. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to believe God to be the chief nursing officer, just like yes, two, steps two steps ahead. But to begin to imagine the, that you can be a director, director part of management in a, in a facility, said hospital, in a said hospital, you a floor nurse, a floor nurse. It's, unimaginable. it's unimaginable. It's unimaginable. And you know, NSVPD is what I call spiritual yeah, advantage. advantage. Because God is defying logic, mm -hmm. he's defying background, yeah. he's defying your qualifications, qualifications to push you forward. Imagine so, a, 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 a cleaner. Ha! Imagine a cleaner. My God. What qualifications does she have? No so qualifications. The, so it was the qualification of the cleaner that, that she had that brought her to be a cleaner. Hmm. So how did she now get to become a, a, manager. Ma a manager? Quality control. Manager. 
Like how? How manage? I'm, I'm tempted to ask, how did this happen? God manage. How did this happen? A this cleaner. Is, a cleaner. You know, we need to go past second guessing instructions yeah, on the altar of fire. When yeah. they come forward, Just, Pastor said, lift up what you do. And she's like, you know what? This is what, this I, is do. what I do. A broom and a bucket. Buckets. Simply, and I'm lifting it up before God. And I'm reminded that um, God asked Moses at some point, what yeah, is what in your hands? hands. Yeah. And Moses said, what? I have a rod yeah. in my hands. Yeah. At some point, it was that little lad that yeah, had five loaves, five loaves and, and two fish. fish. What was he carrying? Yes. All he had was simply five loaves Loose and, and two, two fish. fish. So God is able to do the unimaginable when yes. we give him and the little, the little when we present the little that, that we, we have do in have hand. into his hands. And that's what I see here. These testimonies are on. Believable. They're unbelievable. Un unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, and then something that I that stood out for me is like, um, you know, she had God positioned people uh -huh. to speak for her. Right. The first testimony. Okay. God positioned when they came to the point where you know they said, oh, there's this person, there's this person, and they spoke for her at that point in time. And the point is that she would not even ever hey. believe. She would not even ever believe that, look, oh, I'm going to get to that position. Mm. But there were people that had this confidence. Glory. And, you know, so in settings like that, mm. it can only be God. Yes. Because that same person speaking for you doesn't want the, doesn't the person want that same position. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very Do you understand? True. It could only have been God. Right. When God wanted to, wants to elevate a person, he just dulls the mind of the other person. They just take their mind ah. away. Because that same person that is speaking can also aspire Absolutely. to that aspire to that position. Absolutely. And you know that's why it's important to also treat people nicely. Very with nicely kindness. with because kindness. People that she was yes sighing and yes ma'am. Yes. All of a sudden they are yes sighing and yes, yes ma'am. Her. Her. You know, so overtaking is allowed in God's in kingdom. God's kingdom. <laughs> One minute you can be a phonos, the next minute you can be a director. You can be a director. My goodness, yeah. this is unimaginable. You know the timeline Papa said in one hour. In one hour. In one hour. And I'm reminded also, Mama would always say, you know what, align, process it later. Yeah. You know, when you're in that <laughs> atmosphere, there's no need to begin to analyze what, what are you saying? One hour, do you know? There's, there's no need for no argument. Need. Just receive the word with meekness and jump in. Process it. Let your body and mind catch up later. Yeah. So this is phenomenal. They received the word. At some point, she tried to stop herself because it was too big for her mind to conceive. too big for her mind to conceive. Too big for her mind to conceive. You know, her papa tells us that when you can fathom and you can, you know everything about a thing, that means God is not in it. Yes. When you receive from God and you can actually tell, you know all the trajectory, uh -huh. you know how it's going to be, uh -huh. you can permutate and do everything, it's not God. Yes. But when a revelation is too big for you mm. to carry. Mm. God is in it. Yes. <laughs> Glory to God. In? Hey, who wow. is next in line for a wow, wow. Miracle. miracle? For a how did this happen, happen miracle. miracle? What happened here? For yeah. a come and see testimony. Yeah, yes. Regardless of where life or circumstances have dropped Not you, it. receive your own unprecedented unexpected Amen. breakthroughs in the name of Amen. Jesus. Hey, this is Amen. this is too much to wrap my head around. God is awesome. What he cannot do does not exist. Does not, does exist. not exist. Dr. Kelechi, <laughs> today we have seen phenomenal phenomenal testimonies. We started off with our autoimmune conditions, yeah. lifelong, life-threatening and God reversed it. We saw vitiligo. Mm. The skin evened out. Discoloration that cannot be fixed. The God of the fire altar stepped in and her skin is now one perfect blend. Glory to God. We have another testimony of breast cancer. Stage 4 had spread into other organs and God reversed it. Adrenocortical carcinoma. Mm. Wow. <laughs> cancer of the adrenal Adren glands. <laughs> God gave healing to a woman that is a Muslim. Yes. God gave healing. How much more mm. you that is saying Abba, that Abba. is calling out Father every single day on NSPPD Fire Altar. Glory to God, we have 
two final testimonies, Miraculous Career Promotion, Miraculous Career Upgrade from Cleaner to Quality Control Manager, from a floor nurse to a director and a management staff in a hospital. Wow, what a God cannot do. Does not Does exist. Does not exist. Dr. Kelechi, <laughs> wow. One you've, final word. You've said it all. Yes. <laughs> What our God cannot do does not exist. Uh -huh. That's just the truth. Mm -hmm. Because the point is this, we are in that season where believe anything. Mm -hmm. And I love what you just said. Align, process later. And I'm living with that mm. because it's one word that I just think that is, works for all these testimonies that we've talked about. Align first, process later. Yes. <laughs> wow. NSPPD is the place to be. Where would you rather be on a Monday morning? Having seen, having heard these wonders of Elroy, why not come and join us as NSPPD continues Monday through till Friday, 7 a.m. Nigerian time. Come and join us. I'm so excited. Yes. <laughs> come and join us. Do not come back alone. The Strange Acts of God continues 7 a.m. Saturday morning. We'll be right back here. Come back and join us and invite a friend to come join us as well. Do you have a testimony of your own? Do not keep back the wonders of God to yourself. Go ahead and send in your testimony to the testimony number written at the bottom of the screen and be a blessing to God's people. Have you clicked on the share button today? Go ahead. Now, 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 now. <laughs> Click on share. The world needs to hear yeah, what yeah, is so going on. We need to catch the attention of CNN. Yes. God is reversing and undoing and doing and redoing and just doing unimaginable, unimaginable things, things on the altar of fire the world needs to know the world needs to hear there is hope here god is here doing wonders in our midst go ahead and click on the share button if you are yet to are you following us across all of our social media handles go ahead and search for streams of joy international search for pastor jerry is a like and subscribe there are tons of scam pages make sure you do not all a victim and you are following us on our verified pages jesus never misses a service he never misses a prayer meeting and neither should you that brings us to the end of yet another show dr kelechi oyeri so consultant <laughs> family physician thank you. excellence thank you thank you so much thank for your you time so much. for your for the value thank you. for the insights thank may god bless and honor thank you, you sir. thank you, sir. Thank thank you, you sir. so much thank, thank you. you so much to our viewers for watching thank you so much to our viewers for sharing <laughs> till next week saturday remember what god, god cannot do does, does not, not exist, exist. Yeah, it